Telecom is a very important aspect of technology in current era. The word telecom is the composition of two words, tele and communication. Let us begin with the concept of modulation. Modulation is the process of varying one or more properties of periodic waveform called the carrier signal with a modulating signal that typically contains information to be transmitted. In telecommunications, modulation is the process of conveying a message signal, for example, a digital bitstream or an analog audio signal inside another signal that can be physically transmitted. Modulation is a sine waveform transforms a baseband message signal into a passband signal. To understand how modulation is done, we can use the example of an envelope and a letter. Our input message signal represents a basic letter that we write. But without a proper address, it cannot be sent to proper recipient. Hence, we use an envelope and write the address in proper format and seal it. So that the letter is only received by the intended recipient and no one else. In the same way, we modulate, that is envelope, our signal so that it reaches the intended recipient only. The carrier, that is the postman or in our case, carrier signal, usually sinusoidal wave, makes it possible for us to send our message through the channel. A modulator is a device that performs modulation. A demodulator, sometimes detector or demod, is a device that performs demodulation. The inverse of modulation. A modem from modulator demodulator can perform both the operations. Our next topic is digital and analog modulation. Let's talk about that. The aim of analog modulation is to transfer an analog baseband or low pass signal, for example, an audio signal or TV signal, over an analog bandpass channel at different frequency. For example, over a limited radio frequency band or a cable TV network channel. The aim of digital modulation is to transfer a digital bitstream over an analog bandpass channel, for example, over the public switch telephone network PSTN, where a bandpass filter limits the frequency range to 300 to 3400 Hz or over a limited radio frequency band. Our next topic is analog modulation. Let's see what is analog modulation is. Modulation is a process of changing a characteristic of the carrier signal with the message signal. In the transmitter, the message signal modulates the carrier signal. The modulated carrier signal is sent to the receiver where demodulation of the carrier occurs to recover the message signal. There are three principal forms of modulation. Those are, first, amplitude modulation, AM. The strength or intensity of the signal carrier is varied to represent the data being added to the signal. Second, frequency modulation, FM. The frequency of the carrier waveform is varied to reflect the frequency of the data. Third, phase modulation, PM. The phase of the carrier waveform is varied to reflect changes in the phase of the data. Radio and television broadcast and satellite radio typically use AM or FM. Most two-way radio uses FM, although some employ a mode known as single sideband, SSB. Now here comes the digital modulation. Digital modulation provides more information capacity, high data security, quicker system availability with great quality of communication. Developers of communication systems face some of the constraints. Those constraints were first, available bandwidth, second, permissible power, third, inherent noise level of the system. The RF spectrum must be shared, yet every day there are more users for that spectrum as demand for communication services increases. Digital modulation schemes have greater capacity to convey large amounts of information than analog modulation schemes. Now next comes the advantages of digital modulation. First one is power efficiency. Ability of a modulation technique to preserve the fidelity of digital message at low power. Designer can increase noise immunity by increasing signal power. 
second is bandwidth efficiency trade off between data rate and pulse width easy to implement and cost effective to operate now let us learn what are different types of digital modulation different shift keying methods that are used in digital modulation techniques are first amplitude shift keying ask frequency shift keying fsk phase shift keying psk now first is amplitude shift keying let's get started with it amplitude shift keying ask is a form of amplitude modulation that represents digital data as variation in the amplitude of a carrier wave if the signal value is 1 then the carrier signal will be transmitted otherwise a signal value of 0 will be transmitted in the context of digital communication is a modulation process which imparts to a sinusoid two or more discrete amplitude levels these are related to number of levels adopted by a digital message for a binary message sequence there are two levels one of which is typically zero thus the modulated waveform consists of bursts of sinusoid In an ASK system the binary symbol 1 is represented by transmitting a fixed amplitude carrier wave and fixed frequency for a bit duration of t seconds. A second topic is frequency shift keying FSK. Frequency shift keying FSK is a frequency modulation scheme in which digital information is transmitted through discrete frequency changes of a carrier wave. Frequency shift keying is a method of transmitting digital signals. The two binary states, logic zero that is low and one that is high, are each represented by an analog waveform. Logic zero is represented by a wave at a specific frequency, and logic one is represented by a wave at a different frequency. A third topic is phase shift keying (PSK). Phase shift keying is a digital modulation scheme that conveys data by changing or modulating the phase of a reference signal that is the carrier wave. Phase shift keying is widely used these days within a whole raft of radio communication systems. It is particularly well suited for the growing area of data communication. PSK phase shift keying enables data to be carried on a radio communication signal in a more efficient manner. and frequency shift keying fsk and some other forms of modulation with more forms of communication transferring from analog format to digital format data communication is growing in importance and along with it the various forms of modulation that can be used to carry data there are several flavors of phase shift keying that are available for use each form has its own advantages and disadvantages and a choice of the optimum format has to be made for each radio communication system that is designed to make the right choice it is necessary to have a knowledge and understanding of the way in which psk works next comes psk and its variations there are many ways to implement a psk modulation It is even possible to combine phase shift keying and amplitude keying in a form of modulation known as quadrature amplitude modulation that is QAM. There are many variation on the basic idea of phase shift keying. Each one has its own advantages and disadvantages enabling system designers to choose the one of the most applicable for any given circumstances. There is a list that gives some of the more commonly used forms of phase shift keying. PSK and related forms of modulation that are used those are PSK phase shift keying BPSK binary phase shift keying QPSK quadrature phase shift keying OQPSK offset quadrature phase shift keying 8PSK 8 point phase shift keying 16PSK 16 point phase shift keying QAM quadrature amplitude modulation 16QAM 16 point quadrature amplitude modulation 64 QAM 64 point quadrature amplitude modulation MSK minimum shift keying GMSK Gaussian filtered minimum shift keying Our next topic is PSK and its representation 
It is often convenient to represent a phase shift Keats signal and sometimes other type of signal using a phasor constellation diagram. Using the scheme, the phase of the signal is represented by the angle around the circle and the amplitude by the distance from the origin or center of the circle. In this way, the signal can be resolved into quadrature component representing the sine or 1 for in-phase component and the cosine for the quadrature component. Most phase shift keyed systems use a constant amplitude and therefore points appear on one circle with a constant amplitude and the changes in the state being represented by the movement around the circle. For binary shift keying using phase reversal, the two points appear at opposite points on the circle. Other forms of phase shift keying may use different points on the circle and there will be more points on the circle. Using a constellation view of the signal enables quick fault finding in the system. If the problem is related to phase, the constellation will spread around the circle. If the problem is related to magnitude, the constellation will spread off the circle, either towards or away from the origin. These graphical techniques assist in isolating problems much faster than when using other techniques. Our next topic is Binary Phase Shift Keying BPSK. Let's see what's there in this topic. The problem with phase shift keying is that the receiver cannot know the exact phase of the transmitted signal to determine whether it is in a mark or space condition. This would not be possible even if the transmitter and receiver clocks were accurately linked because the path length would determine the exact phase of the received signal. To overcome this problem, PSK systems use a differential method of encoding the data onto the carrier. This is accomplished, for example, by making a change in phase equal to a 1 and no phase change equal to 0. Further improvements can be made upon this basic system and a number of other types of phase shift keying have been developed. One simple movement can be made by making a change in phase by 90 degrees in one direction for a 1 and 90 degrees the other way for 0. This retains the 180 degree phase reversal between 1 and 0 states but gives a distinct change for a 0. In a basic system not using this process it may be possible to lose synchronization if a long series of zeros are sent. This is because the phase will not change the state for this occurrence. Now next comes Quadrature Phase Shift Keying QPSK. QPSK is a variation of BPSK and it is also known as Double Side Band Suppressed Carrier DSBSC Modulation Scheme which sends two bits of digital information at a time called digits. It actually transmits two bits per symbol which means a QPSK symbol doesn't represent 0 and 1. It represents 00, 01, 10 or 11. Instead of conversion of digital bits into a series of digital stream, it converts them into bit pairs. This decreases the data bit rate to half which allows space for the other users. Our next topic is QAM. Quadrature Amplitude Modulation QAM is a method in which two signals are used to amplitude modulate two carriers that are in quadrature that is 90 degrees out of phase with each other. The two modulated signals are combined. A common application is in PAL and NTSC color television transmission. Color is encoded in two analog signal called I and Q which modulate quadrature color carriers. Modems also use this approach to increase the data bandwidth they can carry or more accurately to trade bandwidth for error rate or noise immunity. Here I conclude this chapter. Hope you understand all the concepts clearly. Meet you in the next chapter. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.